Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we have a really quite interesting beer. We're going to continue on with the Polish Beer Month that I'm doing for you across May, and I'm really enjoying this series so far, I have to admit, but we've got another new brewery to look at today, and this is a style that I've really started to enjoy recently. So we're going to go to Brover Kingpin, who are based primarily in Poznan, and this is their Berserker. This one's a black IPA, and it should be really nice. It was rated at 97 on rate beer and it's got jasmine, it's got heather and it's got orange peel in it so it should be very very interesting and of course this beer you know when it's rated at 97 on rate beer you are not going to be disappointed with this one 97 overall and 92 within the style and this was another one that was really highly recommended to me by P uh, by Pavel at Pivo Maniac very nice beer store in Warsaw do go and check his store out if you have time and you're in the city he's got a great selection of Polish beers big metal head just like me very very nice guy and I'm sure he will help you out check out the link to his shop in the in the description below there's the link to his Facebook page there so be sure to pay him a visit but anyway as is usual with my beer reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery if you do want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual websites are in the description below that's the brewery website the link to my future reviews that I'll do from Brother Kingpin this is the very first time I'm trying one of their beers but hopefully it's not the last I've heard their other beers are really damn awesome as well so hopefully I can get a hold of those and review them for you and if you do want to see more beer reviews just subscribe to the channel all the usual social media is down there but please do get in touch if you have any other Polish beer breweries and recommendations from Poland. I'd love to do some more Polish beer reviews for you and I hope you guys really enjoy this Polish beer month that I'm doing for you. The beer is really good and I do apologise in advance for any bad Polish pronunciations in this video. Polish is one of the craziest languages you're going to come across. I always make the effort to get the pronunciations right but Polish it's pretty much impossible so I apologise for that. But anyway to tell you about Brother Kingpin. So Brother Kingpin are one of the many contract gypsy a phantom kind of breweries in Poland so this means basically that they don't have their own brewery facility but rather they brew at a lot of other different breweries and use the spare capacity but these guys were founded back in 2014 and the men behind the brewery are Michal Kopak, Marek Kaminski, Bartosz Kluszynski and also Wojciech Usak and the brewery are one of a, a huge number of contract breweries in Poland as I say there's some really good breweries down there but Michal is actually the head brewer and he apparently has been involved in a few different breweries in Poland but he also sells home brewing supplies, runs brewing courses and he also does a bit of beer blog and his blog is actually called um, Piwny Garac which means like beer garage. I'm not sure if that's the exact, exactly the right translation but do go and check out his blog but apparently he's a qualified environmental engineer that's spe that specialised in food and he's also a certified judge with the Polish Home Brewing Society. I think it's the PSPD if I'm not mistaken but I actually couldn't find any other information on the other guys that are involved in the brewery here. Maybe I'm just not searching the right things but as you can tell the head brewer from this brewery is very experienced and it definitely knows what he's doing but they do have a good variety of different beers there. So just to list a few of these for you there's this guy here the Berserker which is a black IPA, Rock and Roller which is an American Pale Ale, Headbanger which is an Imperial IPA. I think that one was only launched a couple of weeks ago actually. There's the Diggler which is the Hazelnut Porter, Sencha which is an American IPA, Turbo Geezer which is an Imperial Coffee Stout, Geezer which is a, a lower down version of that, just a regular stout, and there's also the Phantom, which is a white IPA. They also have a few seasonal beers too, that's the Muerto, which is a pumpkin ale, Lunatic, which is a wet beer, and also Shaman, which is a summer red ale. So hopefully I can get the red ale actually, it should be coming into season fairly soon, but as you can tell, for a Gypsy Brewery, they do have quite a nice big regular range of beers, so you do want to check out some of these. As I say, Pavel at Pivo Maniac said that these are some of the best beers you're going to find in Poland, so I'm sure we're going to find out soon. So, um, just to tell you a little bit about this beer before we get stuck into it then, this one is a 7% black IPA, it's hopped with Chinook, Simcoe, Amarillo, Citra and Cascade hops, and it's got a malt base of Pale Ale, Cara Claire, Chocolate, Light and Wheat Malts, and there's also additions of Heather, Orange Peel, Curacao and Jasmine to the brew and the yeast strain in this one is Cephala US05 so it sounds like a very complex and quite interesting beer I'll just let you have a little look at the artwork for this one before we open it up it looks very very nice in fact so um, the artwork on the, some of the other ones is very impressive as well but it tells you in Polish on the side there you can see the little bit on the back there it actually tells you about all the hops and things that are in this brewery this one is well in date by the way I'm reviewing this one for you 
on the 17th of February 2016. You'll see the review in May though, because I've been working on these Polish beers slowly, slowly because it's quite hard to find information on the breweries. But yeah, it's very nicely presented. I really do like the artwork on this one. So I'm going to see if I can steam the label off of this and keep it. And you can see it's just a plain bottle cap on this one. But very nice one. It's 7% black IPA, jasmine, uh, heather and orange peel in this brew. So it should be a very nice one. Some really good American hops in there too. So without further ado, let's get this beer open and we'll get on with the tasting then. So yeah, as you can see, a nice smoky opening on this one. It really does smell just like a regular IPA when you open it. You're getting some really nice fruity characters out of this one. So let's get it out and into the glass then. But the black IPA is a style that I really have started to enjoy recently. It's one it's one of these really unusual hybrid styles. It's almost like half Schwarzbier, like a German Schwarzbier and an American IPA. It's something that really kind of shouldn't work together but it somehow does and it's become really popular. One of the best black IPAs I've had was the, the Black Salts and Body Malts. It was an Imperial Black IPA from Toyol and that one was absolutely beautiful and really since then I've kind of fallen in love with the style but there's some very good black IPAs. Uh, Beer Bliotech actually here in Sweden produced some really awesome ones too. But as you can see this beer has poured a really nice how would you say, dark ebony rosewood colour. There's a kind of quarter finger of a frothy, beigey coloured head on this one. It's actually kind of quite creamy coloured, a sort of beigey creamy colour, but that's faded away just to be a very thin foamy layer. I'm not sure exactly how well you can see that in the video, but overall the beer looks very nice. If I hold it up to the light, it does have a bit of a kind of coppery mahogany edge to it. It's not quite ruby, it's more of a browny colour that comes out of this one. I'm not sure how well you can see that in the video. I'll tip the light a little bit and just like you see, you can see there is a bit of a red tinge to this beer, but there's no transparency to it at all. If, and that's just to do with the cut, that's just to do with how dark it is actually. There's some big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass. Just a few little ones actually visible going up towards the bottom of the head, but otherwise it looks like a pretty calm beer and there's no visible sediment, but that said, there is still maybe about a quarter of the bottle actually in the glass there, about a fifth of it actually, I've poured up to the 400 milliliter mark. So yeah, let's have a look at the aroma of this one. So without sugaring it up, first thing you're going to notice about this beer, very juicy and very fruity. On first note, you don't get too much of the malt base, you can smell some sweet chocolate there, you can smell a little bit of the roasted malt, but on first, on first impression, the main part of the aroma really is the nice juicy orangey citrus. You can pick up a little bit of the grapefruit, maybe some of the passion fruit in there as well. The orange is coming out really as well of course because of the, the orange peel that they've put in this one. You can get a bit of grapefruit from the Cascade. The Chinook will give you some of that as well actually. Amarillo will also help the oranges come out. That's got a really nice orangey ester in that hop. But there's a bit more complexity to that as well. You can pick up some of the bready characters too. A little bit of passion fruit actually, you'll get that from the Citra hop and from the, uh, from the Simcoe. The Simcoe is quite distinct for its, uh, for its passion fruit notes. But when you sugar this beer up, the malt base starts to come out a lot more. So you're getting some nice, a little bit of roasted coffee in there, but mainly a bready aroma actually. The coffee comes out once the beer settles down again. You can pick up a little bit of this roasted black malt in there. There's some milky chocolatey sweetness, a little bit of dark chocolate as well actually. I'm not really smelling too much of the heather. There's a little bit of a caramelly smell and you can pick up some of the heather in there. Just a little bit of it, but it's very, very subtle. So do pay attention to that. But overall, this nose, it's got a nice kind of sweet, chocolatey, bready, a little bit of coffee-ish malt base. But it's mainly fruity. There's some orangey citrus from the Amarillo. A bit of grapefruity character, which of course is the Cascade and the Chinook. There's a bit of passion fruit as well. That's the Simcoe and the citra coming out. Maybe some like mangoes and apricots, those are also two things that you get from the Simcoe and the citra, but overall it's quite a big juicy orangey and tropical fruit nose. There's a little bit, you can pick up just a little bit of a floral character and maybe some piney resins too, but the malt base really starts to come out more when you sugar it up. So as I always say, when it comes to complex beers like black IPAs, take a little bit of time and just enjoy the aroma. This has got a very nice aroma to it. So I would recommend that you do that. But let's get stuck into this one. So this is the Berserker 7% Black IPA with some really nice American hops, some nice malts, 
and also jasmine, heather and some uh, orange peel in it. So it should be really nice. So another Polish beer. Let's get stuck into this one. Nastrovia. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy the Polish beer one. Now it's quite different to what you expect from the aroma. I'll say that straight up, but this is a very, very good beer. When you try this beer, or when you take in the aroma, you actually think it's going to be a lot sweeter than it actually is. This one really does lean towards being quite roasted. I've had some black IPAs before where the roasted character is actually quite subtle and it's mainly a kind of nice chocolatey note and it blends together with like the oranges and the grapefruit and stuff but this one really does lean more towards the kind of coffee-ish flavours and the roasted malts and that's probably the, the curacao that's in there. Really nice Brazilian coffee that's in this one. This is a very good beer. I can see right away why this is rated at 97. It's really, it is a very good beer. If you like black IPAs, if you like American black IPAs, this one is right up there with the best that you're going to find in America quite easily. Hmm. And as you may have guessed from the beers I was reading out from this brewery, they do focus more on the American styles of beer. So this is a brewery, if you like these American beers and you want to try some European things, I'm pretty sure with this brewery, from what Pavel told me, you can pretty much pick any of the beers you like and you will enjoy them. So do be sure to check out Bro Brova Kingpin. They produce some really awesome stuff. Mm. But as I always say, sugar the beer around your mouth and just let the whole palate adjust to this one before you start dissecting the flavour more. But this is a very, very nice beer. So as I said, this one's a little bit different from the aroma. The middle of your palate is just blanketed with this kind of kind of quite dark brown bready note. There's a good coffee-ish black malt to this one. You can feel it just before just before the edges of the tongue. There's a nice dark roasty black malt in there. There's a bit of coffee. That of course is the curacao coming out. But you can also pick up some of the sweeter elements too. There's some sweet chocolate in the middle of the palate. But it's a little bit like dark chocolate too, I would say. You can pick up these chocolatey notes, but you can also get a bit of spicy character from the jasmine and from the uh, the heather as well, particularly the jasmine, I think. Because that coffee, that curacao and black roasted malt there, it really lingers and it makes me think that that's more, more, um, more where the jasmine flavours are coming out. But, you know, it's really quite an interesting thing to add to a black IP. I wouldn't have thought to add jasmine to the beer at all. But it works, you know, it works really nicely. I always enjoy reviewing beers like this that have a few differences, have a few kind of quirky things added to it. And this this is beautiful. This is a very, very good beer. There's no doubt about that at all. Mm. But of course, you're getting the fruity notes in there as well. There's some nice juicy fruity character to this one. I want to say that in the back corners of the palate, there's a little bit of earthiness, but from the hops that are in this beer, you wouldn't really get that actually. Um, there is, but you can get just this almost earthy character in the back corner of the palate. It mixes well, it almost builds a good bridge between the roasty black malts in the middle of the palate and the malty side of things and the hops. There's definitely a bit of kind of almost earthy, very roasty bitterness in the back corners of the palate. As you come further forward, it starts to become more floral and aromatic. There's some piney resins kind of underpinning this one. That's of course what you're going to get from the uh, from the Simcoe in this beer. But also the Chinook has a very um, quite a, a big dry and um, bitter floral aromatic character and you can definitely pick that up in this one. Hmm. But with all these hops in there, the fruity side of the beer is really interesting as well. So there's a nice orangey citrus in this one. Of course, when you've got orange peel in the beer too, you will, you should accept that, uh, expect that and you can pick it up. But there's some nice grapefruity notes in there. I think it mixes quite well with the orangey character. Usually these flavours are quite pungent, but overall the fruity feel on this one is quite juicy and quite complex. But you can get a little bit 
of the passion fruit mixing in there too. There's some nice juicy mango, maybe a little bit of apricot actually, but if there's any apricot, it is very subtle. For me, it's more orangey passion fruit and grapefruit in there. Those are the three main things. Maybe just a little bit of mango, but it comes across as more of a juicy fruit aroma in this one. As I said, there's a bit of floral aromatic character and some pine resin just underpinning the beer too. But overall, it is very nice. Mm. Yeah, that's a really good beer. Around the front of the tongue too, I would say it's quite smooth and a little bit grassy. But yeah, there's so much going on with the hops in this beer. There's a good complexity to the malt base as well. And of course, with some black IPAs, for example, American brewers can always make them very focused on the hops. And you know, there's nothing wrong with that, but I always find I like very, very complex beers. And for them to add, at Brewer Kingpin, for them to add some of these, the heather and the... Uh, for them to add the heather, the curacao, and, and things like that to this one. It gives it that added complexity to the malt base, and that's what really makes this beer stand out to me. They've done a really good job with this one. So if you enjoy black IPAs, and you like them to be a little bit more malty and complex, then this is definitely one you want to go for. Mm. But in terms of the mouthfeel of this one, I would say mid-bodied is a good way to describe this. This, this one... Is it's actually quite light to be honest with you, but the thing that makes it feel a bit heavier is the malt base. The malt base has a lot of roasty bitterness to it. That um, coffee-ish flavour with the jasmine and the and the heather in this one really does linger there. That's what really dominates the flavour of the beer. The hops fade away quite a bit, and you could easily mistake this beer for being something like a Schwarz beer if you if you only had the aftertaste. If you didn't have some of these hoppy elements that it's more malt dominated this beer in the aftertaste definitely but you've got a good balance between some of the sweeter char characteristics and the malt base there's a bit of sweetness there's a bit of bitterness and there's also a little bit of spicy character from the jasmine and from the heather that's in there too of course in scotland my local brewery do the famous Freya heather ale and i love heather beers too so it's a little bit quirky for me but the hoppy characters are really nice as well there's a bit of um, dryness at the back corner of the palate that earthy flavor some pine raisins and floral character just dry it out as you come to the front but around the very front of the palate it is quite wet and you've got a good juicy character from the hop as well a little bit of an oily feel to this one but overall you know it gives you everything you expect from a black ipa and a bit more because it is a bit more complex in the malt base so yeah overall this is a very very good beer i can see exactly why it's got 97 on rate beer and I can see exactly why Pavel recommended that this one to me. You know, I love reviewing beers like this on the channel that have that added complexity, and this one certainly doesn't disappoint. This is a really, really good beer. Perhaps, probably, probably fair to say, definitely one of the best two or three black IPAs I've reviewed on the channel. I'm reluctant to say any beer is the best one, but you know, this one is very, very good. So I hope you take my word for that one. If you do enjoy black IPAs and you want to try one from Poland, this is probably the one you want to go for. This is a very, very good beer. I like the complexity and the malt base of it. So yeah, go and check out Brova Kingpin and try the Berserker. You will certainly not be disappointed with this beer. But anyway, um, I hope you've enjoyed this beer review. been really cool to do another one from Poland for you. The standard of beer there, like I said, is very, very high. So I hope you guys are enjoying the beer reviews and enjoying learning about Polish craft beer. It's one of these countries where perhaps you don't think there's such a, a bustling beer scene, but they produce some pretty damn awesome stuff. So I really hope you guys enjoy the series. As I said, if you're watching from Poland, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you'd like me to review. Hopefully I can sort something out to review those for you so please do get in touch but as always let me know your own thoughts in this beer in the comments section below i hope you enjoyed the review until the next time please like subscribe share all the usual youtube stuff go and check out my social media things but do and most importantly go and try some of the brova kingpin beers and do give me some polish beer recommendations thank you once again for watching and i'll catch you soon with the next in my polish beer month series go and check out berserker from brova kingpin in, from Poznan in Poland. It's almost halfway between Berlin and Warsaw, so do go and check it out. Very nice city from what I've heard, and hopefully I can go there soon. Slanja just now, and I'll catch you soon. Nostrovia.